So hi, uh, my name is Arthur and uh, I have a Pebble watch. I've been a fan of the Pebble uh, smartwatch since the very beginning, uh, which by the way was only, I don't know, 2013, but it seems like a long time ago. Um, and one of the things I love about it is I can program it myself to do, you know, show on its face what I want to, want to see and so on. I also have a calendar program that I wrote for myself years ago. It was kind of part of my master's thesis and I just keep dragging it along through the decades. Uh, making it fancier and fancier. So I wanted to kind of integrate the two. So first, uh, Pebble started on Kickstarter in 2013. They're in their fifth generation now. And I, I have an ax to grind here. Apple did not invent the smartwatch. In a few years, everyone's going to tell you they did, uh, just like they invented everything else. But they didn't, and neither did Android. I don't know if Pebble did, but, but these guys didn't. <laughs> Um, so one of the really nice things about the latest generation of the Pebble Watch is they have this thing called the timeline. So not only do you have your watch face, but you can press the upper or lower button here to go back or forward through a timeline through the next, through one day back and up to about three days forward. So you can see your appointments, you can see the weather, you know, attached to sunrise and sunset. If, you're, if you've installed an app that uh, tracks uh, uh, sports, then you can see, you know, the scores for games going through and, and so on. So I wanted to take my personal calendar and jam those events in the timeline so they would show up on my watch. Um, and I talked last time, so for those of you who weren't here, I apologize, but I built this graph database called Despot, which I built all this on top of. Um, so my goal is to integrate the two. Let me first tell you about the Pebble Timeline API. So uh, these guys have actually done a very nice job making an API that's simple and easy to use. Uh, and after having seen the APIs for some of the other watches and phones, I can really vouch for this. So every event on the timeline is called a pin. Everyone has a unique ID. And the way that you put an event on the timeline is you just create some JSON that declares you know, the start time, the start date, the description, the location, that kind of thing. You code it as JSON and you put, put it to an HTTP URL on uh, Pebble servers. And that uh, in, encoded in that is information about who you are and which watches this information should go to. So you can, you can put updates and you can delete them. It's all nice and simple and easy to use. And here's an example. So if I put to this URL that JSON, it describes the, the, the time, which includes the date, the duration uh, of this meeting, um, a, kind of a simple layout of how it should appear on the screen. It's a very small screen, so you don't have to say much. Um, you know, what icon to use to represent uh, you know, the, the event, etc. cetera. Um, so it's very simple. If I push that, boom, it shows up on my watch. Um, but now I have a problem. I have a calendar, which I'm updating on my desktop all the time. It's actually running in the cloud somewhere, but I, you know, I, I use a web app to push events to the calendar, to update them, to delete them, etc. And I want to make sure that I, I sync from that calendar to the watch. So I have to account for failures, uh, which is, you know, you just have to account for failures when you're dealing with networks, particularly ones that talk to, you know, this is a Bluetooth device that talks to my watch, even on my, my phone, which in turn talks over some network to a server, which in turn might be down. So all of these links can go down, and they do all the time. So I just made a simple commit protocol to, uh, to, to write to the database the intent of uh, pushing something to the timeline, then push to the timeline, then verify that the, the event has actually shown up on the timeline. So when I create an event, uh, I just give it a version. Every event has a version. So the node is the graph node that represents the event. There are a whole bunch of other, there's a whole bunch of other information in the database representing the start time, the end time, the description, etc. But I make sure that I have a version on it when I create it. When I make a change to it, I just bump that number, just increment it by one. And when I'm going to delete it, I delete everything but this. This, don't pay much attention to this. This is just a, something that's left over so that when the event is deleted, another process can come in and find it on the watch and delete it from the watch too, even though no, none of the other information is left. So there's a background task that's just running, uh, does a bunch of cleanup steps, which I'll talk about in a moment. But basically, here's what it does. So there's a query at the beginning, which just looks for a node that has an event version, but doesn't have a pin version. So if it has an event version and not a pin version, the invariant is 
uh, the invariant is if it doesn't have an event version but does have a pin version, excuse me, if it has an event version but does not have a pin version, that means it hasn't yet been pushed to the watch. So if, it, if those two are true and it does have a time associated with it, a start minutes, um, that means that it's something that could appear in the timeline. It's not just uh, an event associated with the entire day. And if it appears in one of the four days in the, that's currently active on the watch, uh, I'll get a result back from this query. And what I do is I just add a node that says, I intend to push this to the timeline. Uh, I add a secret, which I use for authentication. It's just a random number. And then I actually push the pin to, uh, to Pebble. So at this point, if, if I fail while trying to push the pin, the database will still have the pin uh, intent and pin secret, and I'll know that I need to do some cleanup when I come back. And then if I succeed at pushing the pin, then I atomically make the version uh, of the pin equal the version of the event, and I delete the intent. So I have a minute left. Um, and this is a whole bunch of other stuff that I do to just clean up in the case that there's a failure somewhere. But it's probably more detailed than you're interested in knowing. Uh, uh, so I, I just want to tell you one other cool feature that the watch has. Um, you can actually, in that JSON, encode an action that you'd like to be able to take when you are looking at the event. So I like to encode an action that says, you know, put this off until tomorrow. You know, I'm going to work on, I'm going to work on my taxes. Push, put this off until tomorrow, for example. So the way this works is you just encode in the JSON a URL that you want to do a put to and you know, a payload that you want to put to it. And it will do that for you when you press the button. So here's an example. The top part here is exactly the same thing I showed you earlier, but the actions at the bottom is just what I've added. So there's an array that includes the URL, the secret, sorry, the URL, the headers, uh, what to display on the watch when in the menu, so the word delete in this case, uh, what to display if it succeeds, and what to display if it fails. Um, so it's really, really trivial, simple API. I put this on the timeline when I press the button next to delete. So I was saying advance earlier, now I'm saying delete, but you can do both. Uh, when I press the button that says delete, it does a post to that URL, and whatever the server is going to do gets done. In this case, you know, updates the database, runs through all the tasks, the steps I told you earlier to update the watch uh, timeline. So in conclusion, it was a lot of fun to do. I really like my Pebble watch, and I use it absolutely every day, all the time, including this calendar integration. And it's all scheme code. Cool. Can you actually run your own code on the Pebble? Yes. And what is that code written in? That code is written in C, or, uh, yes, amazingly enough, uh, so the very first version had much tighter limits. I'm not sure what the limits are now, but the very first version limited you to 24K, which in the back in the day was a lot, but now seems like so little. But you could actually do you know, quite a bit in there, and uh, uh, it's particularly not too bad because you can fire off things to the watch to the phone, I keep, I keep saying watch. You can fire requests off to the watch for it to do computation and then send the results back. Um, and furthermore, the, the, the phone can send requests to the internet, uh, so to the cloud, as we say now, uh, and, and you know, do arbitrarily complicated things and route them back to the watch. But the watch, unlike some of the other watches, uh, you know, can do quite a bit by itself, um, even when the phone isn't around. So the timeline is all preserved. Uh, you know, you can build all kinds of functionality where you can leave your phone behind. So you like register stuff in like advantage, something like whenever it connects to the phone, do run my code or like at a certain time run my code? Yeah, so uh, uh, I have a watch face here that basically wakes up, uh, uh, looks at the local store on the, on, on the watch, presents that information, and then simultaneously fires off a request to the phone to in turn fire off a request to the server to get the latest information. And if that all succeeds, then it passes it to the watch. The watch updates its local store and refreshes. Um, so that's independent of the timeline, but basically it's all built on the same substrate. Could, could we make a lambda calculus powered uh, pebble 
I'm, you know, it's funny because I was so I, my, when I was when I signed up on the Kickstarter to get the first version of this thing, my goal was to write my watch face in Scheme uh, using this uh, version of Scheme called Stalin, which has an incredible optimizer. It's not a very practical implementation, but it is uh, hyper optimized, um, and I just uh, didn't have the uh, mental energy, I guess, to, to, to really go, or the fortitude to go after it. it. Apparently it's challenging to port and so on, and I, so I just wrote it in C, which I, you know, I had to hold my nose. But, <laughs> but I, I recommend these, they're, they're really fun.